All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you again for joining us for our desktop discussions. Uh, I'm Casey Hope, Marketing Manager at MedCom Benefit Solutions, and I am joined by Michelle Barkey, who is here to answer all of your questions. Um, I just wanna say before we get started um, that I'm not sure how, what the weather is like where you are, but it is a stormy, dark, and dreary day in Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> Um, we have been experiencing some network issues, some power issues, email issues today. So we just wanted to let you know that um, if anything happens during the presentation, during the Q&A, um, we will send out the full list of question and answers, no matter, no matter if we lose power. Um, Medcom is uh, struggling with some email issues, so I might not get it out immediately, but know that it is on my list of things to, to get out to you as soon as possible. So I just wanted to go ahead and put that out there and let you guys know what we are what we are up against today. Um, so I will go ahead and get started with the first question. Michelle, are you ready? I am ready, Casey. Excellent. We'll go ahead and get started. Okay, our first question today, does MedCom know of any one-stop search engines or websites that identify testing sites across the United States? And the answer is, Casey, wouldn't this be nice, but we do not know of any one-stop list of testing sites in the U.S. This would be an enormous task and undertaking as they are city, county, and township specific. They also change regularly. However, a good place to check for all states for what is happening and to get potential information is at Policy in Medicine, which is a Rockingham publication. And they have actually listed the for each state's health department. And that is available at https um, forward slash twice www.policymed.com forward slash 2203 u-s-state-health-department-covid. Dash 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 19 dash resources dash four dash patients dash and dash healthcare dash providers um, dot html and that will be provided that website will be provided on this uh presentation when casey gets it sent out in case you didn't get the full website but they do list every single public health department and that would be the best place to start Thank you, Michelle, and I definitely will include that link in the email once we get the questions and answers ready to send out after today's discussion. Okay, moving on. Does MedCom know which items are now eligible for purchase using MedFlex funds? Um, when will we have a complete list? Well, the IRS has not yet published an updated list. Typically, they do it on a publication known as 502. The last time it was updated was in 2019. But we do know that over-the-counter drugs and menstrual products are now approved. And I do want to mention what an over-the-counter medication is and what it is not. The FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, actually classifies over-the-counter drugs as drugs that are safe and effective for the use of the general public without seeking treatment by a health professional. They are regulated by the Office of Non-Prescription Drugs and have the following characteristics. One, their benefits outweigh their risk. Two, the potential for misuse and abuse is low. Uh, consumers can use them for self-diagnosed conditions. Uh, three, they can, be adequate, they can be adequately labeled. And four, healthcare petitioners are not needed for the safe and effective use of the product. Since the FDA does not regulate any product that you typically see in healthcare stores, they are not part of the definition of OTC drugs or over-the-counter drugs, and I would not consider them. I would also not consider anything that might be legal there, but is still classified under the FDA as a Schedule um, One drug, um, i.e. medical marijuana. So medical marijuana will not be covered under this either. All right, thank you, Michelle. Does MedCom have any specific wording clients can use explaining when an employee on furlough can make a change to their FSA or DCA contribution? 
We are aware that the CARES Act allows employees to make dependent care contribution changes, but as far as I can tell, the rules around FSAs are still the same. Can an employee on furlough keep their FSA? Um, this is um, a two-folded question. First, with the documentation, on the DCA side, unless the employer specifically excludes the DCA um, from being able to be changed, um, the DCA plan can be changed in time the employee has a change in circumstance. As far as the FSA is concerned, to date we haven't received any formal notification or directives from federal authorities um, regarding the FSA plan and its use it or lose it um, qualities. Employers can change during the plan year. The run out provisions, they can add the 2.5 month grace period or they can add a carryover period of up to $500. There has been no formal advice that more than $500 will be committed or that um, an individual can change election amounts in the context of the COVID-19 outbreak. There are some administrators that say, and lawyers that say you can change in the FSA whenever there's a change in healthcare needs, but Medcom Benefit Solution does not believe this is supported by any of the IRS regulations. Others believe that there might be an argument that is an increase in cost of coverage, which would allow a mid-year election change. Again, we do not believe that this has been formally adopted by the IRS. Our belief is that the federal agencies are so overwhelmed momentarily and they're necessarily focused on other priorities and consequently the technicalities pertaining to these type of health and welfare issues are simply not on their current radar. Um, that being said, they do have the authorization to make changes. Um, they actually published a rule in 2018 that said during a national disaster they could make changes. So we're waiting to see if they do um, make those changes that they indicated that they had the authority to make. That said, based on all other actions of our federal government during the onset of this pandemic, we believe that common sense flexibility is the acceptable course of action. In light of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, there is always some risk, but we believe 2020 will be a year of forgiveness. And as the CMS once said, discretionary enforcement. Furloughed employees are still employees and Medcom benefits would still accept contributions to the FSA and administrate the plan of a furloughed employee. Thank you. Is there a limit to the number of times an employee can request to change their DCAP elections and when, when those changes can be made regarding the CCA and BP? these plan? Um, is it prior to 6-1 or ongoing, et cetera? Okay. First off, I think the CCA uh, B plan is a particular plan of this employer, and we won't answer that question here But because this is a general conversation. But there is typically no limit to the number of times that an employee can be quest changes to DCAP. Typically, in the past, we've seen limited changes, but in this environment, we would expect to see a change due to daycare closing and then perhaps a separate change when the daycares reopen. Got it. Um, also just wanna note out there that, you know, if you guys do have more specific questions, uh, feel free to let us know and we'll do our best as always uh, to help where we can. As we are now seeing the group medical carriers allowing employees to enroll or change coverage in mid-year as an SEP due to COVID-19, how are the 125 plans being modified to allow these changes? This is a really good question. And uh, we do know that some of the carriers are opening up open enrollment once again, um, but this is really outside the general guidelines for special enrollment rights under section 125. I know that the administration had considered an op a special enrollment right for the marketplace, and they may consider allowing open enrollment um, again, or a special enrollment right because of the COVID-19. But as of today, that has not happened. Congress and the departments are so busy, they have not yet thought of everything. And we are certainly in uncharted territory, that is for sure. 
there was always a chance the plan could lose its cafeteria plan special uh, status if they allow employees to enroll at a time and that rules are never relaxed. The defense of this, of course, would be that we are in a pandemic situation and it was certainly in the, in the government and the public good. On the other hand, the government probably wants more people enrolled rather than less during this pandemic. So whether or not the cafeteria rules will be strictly enforced this year remains to be seen. But I would imagine the risk is low. However, I do want to make sure that they realize that there's still potentially a risk uh, because it is not under HIPAA a special enrollment right. Now, the other option is um, uh, the, the option is to allow the employees to enroll outside the cafeteria plan on a post-tax basis until more guidance come out. Um, but again, we do believe that this is going to be a year of enforcement discretion. Each client will have to decide how they actually want to handle this. Now, as far as documentation is concerned, I would keep the information from the carrier in your plan file and make a notation as to why you are doing and what you are doing and why you are doing this if you're allowing them to reopen in the plan. Typically, in the plan document, you've already got some plan wording that uh, would support this. Um, or that plan may already have the wording that is required as they have, um, that they have plan administrative discretion to administrate the plan. And they also have sometimes in the plan, in the wrap plan that they have, that the plan administrator can decide who's eligible and use discretion. So. I think you've already probably got enough wording in your plan document to support this. Um, and again, it is a section 125, and this is right now outside that 125. We always caution any employer that chooses to bend the rules in any way should be prepared to demonstrate that all its actions were taken in the best interest of the participants and were not designed to circumvent payment of owed taxes and that it was applied in a discriminatory way and was reasonable. Um, certainly today, I think it's reasonable. I think that um, it certainly is in the best interest of participants. And I don't think anyone is trying to circumvent payment of owed taxes. I think we're more trying to take care of our employees. When we do this, it will certainly help ensure the best possibility of success although there is no guarantee in case there is ever a participant complaint and or an IRS uh, challenge to the employer's decision. But first and foremost, check your plan documents that you already have and look at the plan administrative function and see if you can fit it into that function. And then at the same time, um, keep the documentation as to why you're doing what you're doing and the information from the carriers that they have opened up this moment for the pandemic. Thank you, Michelle. Um, that is the last um, of our listed questions today. Um, I will open it up. If, if you guys have anything uh, to add here at the end, you feel free to send that over to us via chat. Um, let us know if you've got any quick questions that Michelle may be either able to answer or we can uh, possibly look up for the next time. If not, please um, know that we'll send these questions and answers out to you as soon as possible. Um, all of the desktop discussions are available on MedCom Benefit Solutions YouTube channel under, I think it's the news and updates playlist, but you can find all of them um, there from the very beginning through this one once I get it uploaded today. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for submitting your questions. Um, we really appreciate your time um, that you're giving to us, and, and we are certainly here to help you whenever we are able to. So thank you, Michelle, for being here today as always. And thank you, uh, Casey. hopefully the sun will come out in Jacksonville sometime soon. That would be yeah. nice. Yes, you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you.